Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. This week, we take you to Fort Bennett, a historical site in Tobago that offers visitors a panoramic view of the Caribbean Sea overlooking Grafton Beach. Now, Fort Bennett was built by the Dutch to protect their settlement in the Great Quarland Bay area. We have a lot more for you as our program continues. But first, a look at our top stories. I'm Davia Chambers, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. In the headlines, the island draws attention to the issue of renewal energy with an impressive solar energy project at Signal Hill Secondary School. Youth are the beneficiaries as the Calder Hall Y Zone is recommissioned and later we take you to a symposium designed to ensure our boys stay on the right track. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Fort Bennett was named after English mercenary Lieutenant Robert Bennett, who commanded a small batch of settlers that left the Duchy of Courland. Located in Black Rock, it's got one of the most spectacular views of the island's many historical forts still in existence. Clean, green, safe and serene is not just a mantra for Tobago. And one school project is highlighting the power of solar energy, even as the island seeks to reduce its carbon footprint. Omidara Mills has more. Solar energy or energy from the sun is one of the cleanest and most abundant renewable energy sources. It can be converted into thermal energy, also known as heat, or electrical energy to be used in homes, businesses and schools, like the Signal Hill Secondary School. It's now the first school on the island to be using solar energy via these solar panels on the roof of its library to power its computers. We spoke with Adrian Thomas, a renewable solar engineer, who explained why he decided to start this project. I saw the, the utter what I say, lack of renewable energy drives in Trinidad and Tobago for obvious reasons, in terms of energy cost. So I said that one of the best ways to create impact would be to uh, look at a school and more so Tobago, because Tobago's whole green theme lies or ties into what this is all about. This Renew School-based initiative began in late 2016. Under the guidance of Mr. Thomas, a six-member student team, the Power Rangers, participated in a school-based recycling program. They got training in energy management and in the installation of the solar energy system. One student says after this hands-on project, he knows just what career he wants to pursue. I am really happy to have this because I also wanted to go into the field of renewable energy engineering and having this as a um, background of, from me it helps me as giving me opportunities in terms of being able to get accepted into any school, well not any school but being able to get accepted into schools that have this program. The solar energy project is also powering the lights as well as the air conditioning units in the library. Now we spoke with Jamila Amin Bakas, head of the Department of Sciences at the Signal Hill Secondary School, and she explained that this project has several benefits for the school. It will serve to reduce the energy consumption bill uh, for the government. It will also serve, it, what it has done is allowed our students to be able to see renewable energy in a different light, to appreciate that we all can take part in an activity that can serve to reduce the amount that we are, you know, the, the amount of, of fossil fuels that we are using up. The part where we collected bottles, that played a, good, a, a big part in my life in that I have learned to, to, to recycle and conserve. Even in my homes, I would tell my mother, my father, turn off the light, things like that, just to conserve energy. The initiative is part of efforts to encourage more students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. The project was supported by Renew TT, the British High Commission, the THA's Eco-Industrial Development Company of Tobago, EADCOT, and various private energy companies. It's hoped that this solar energy project can be implemented in other schools throughout the island. 
I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Here's another piece of history. In 1778, the British military established two 18-pounder cannons to defend the bay against the American privateers. The cannons were used against the invading French in 1781. Now, literacy is a skill many people take for granted, but one Tobago-born educator is supporting the development of students from two Tobago schools using technology. More from Crystal George. Every child learns and develops differently. And for children who have challenges with learning and literacy, it can be easy to feel left behind. But one Tobago-born educator is supporting the island's effort to change this. Dr. Brian Yearwood, an assistant superintendent for academics and accountability at Texas Tech University in the U.S., specialized in learning development. In giving back, he donated 61 Chromebooks to two primary schools, Hope Anlican and his alma mater, Scarborough Methodist. The computers are equipped with literacy development software programs known as MindPlay and Mayon, to help students in need bridge their learning gaps. For listening to words from the Chief Secretary, uh, Honorable Kelvin Charles, as he wrote about the need to improve literacy on the island. So I, I, I felt compelled. I said I have to get on board, do something to help to give back to my country that, that raised me. The use of technology and innovation to enhance learning has also become a critical part of the island's education system. Here we have, we are marrying the two, the technology with the literacy. Using the technology to teach the boys and the girls in our primary schools to learn to read and to write and to understand what they are reading and writing, to think critically all facets of thinking and reading, we are marrying the two, with the marrying that with technology. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles is pleased with this support. He believes initiatives like these, together with a number of programs introduced by the Education Division to boost literacy in Tobago, will go a long way in changing the education landscape. He's also praising Tobagonians who live abroad, but still make a contribution to the island. We talk about the diaspora, and we have seen where those persons who would have been nurtured and developed in some instance here and have gone abroad, how they are interested in ensuring that they, in some way, contribute to the development of the island they would have left behind. And for that, we applaud them. This is the first time Mind Play and Mayan Literacy Development programs will be used in the Caribbean. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. This oven was used by the settlers to heat shots when the French invaded in the late 18th century. The fort was built mainly to protect sugar loading operations in the bay below, which was a key shipment point for sugar. Now this, over the years, workers of the Unemployment Relief Program, or URP, have contributed significantly to the development of Tobago. Now policymakers are increasing the value of the program by focusing on the professional development of workers. We have all the details in this report. More than 1,500 employees make up the Unemployment Relief Program, URP. They carry out various agricultural, environmental, and construction projects. To make the program more viable, the workers now have to go through a verification process. It's the first step in the reorganization of the program. The aim is to provide courses that help workers develop their vocational talents. Part of the verification process, they will be um, identifying what area or what skill areas they would be interested in including the revenue generating areas. So if you want to be a mason, carpenter, so on. And so we're having programs, we're partnering with the Division of Education with the capacity building program that they have there, so that workers will be certified for the first time. Workers of the URP program will be certified when they are now part of the program, so that we will be now producing certified masons, joiners, and so on, right here in the URP program. The Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment will partner with other units within the Assembly. 
They will provide workers with business skills so that they can become more marketable. We're also looking at providing other soft skills for them um, in terms of managing the workspace, interfacing with, with, um, with your employer, writing resumes, all of financial planning. So all of these things they will be um, exposed to. We also will be partnering with the BDU to see what other opportunities that there will be for these workers. So there will be a wider range of opportunities for URP workers now under this revised policy that we have for the, Euro the Unemployment Relief Program. But it won't be all about making money. The Secretary says employees will also be providing skilled labor for those who can't afford it. We are now about to enter into an arrangement with the Self-Help Commission so that when persons engage the Self-Help Commission for material, we will pro um, provide um, labor through URP so that the residents of Tobago are able to directly benefit, especially those most in need. Employees work primarily during the morning. The changes that are coming mean that they'll have more skills so that they can produce more work. It's therefore expected that the restructuring exercise should improve the productivity and professionalism of workers within the program. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when Let's Talk Tobago continues, we head to Calder Hall for the Wise Zone recommissioning ceremony. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The cannons here at the fort are in a recess near the entrance to the grounds, which gives us a great illustration of what the original battlefield would have looked like. Now the youth of the Calder Hall community now have a space of their own as the Calder Hall Y Zone was recently reopened. We have more in this report. It was commissioned in 2013 as a youth-friendly space purely for hosting youth-centric programs. Due to infrastructural challenges, the Y Zone was closed, but it's once again in operation and will open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Our Y Zones are youth-friendly spaces created for persons primarily between the ages of 10 and 25 to facilitate the meaningful engagement of these persons. Currently, there are seven Y Zones on the island. They are at Calder Hall, Speyside, Lands for me, Canby Mount Pleasant, Mason Hall, Plymouth, and Argyle. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you, these spaces belong to the community, and we as a division expect that you will personalize them in a manner befitting all that is positive and unique to the youth throughout Tobago. The Y Zone has games for children and computer facilities provided to young community members at no cost. And a number of new training programs will be implemented. Be present and to come and lend support. Because I can say with certainty that we have a vast majority of people who the only support that they get when the day come is at school. The Y Zone is built from a repurposed cargo container. It has all the amenities its young clients will need. Chief Secretary Calvin Charles, who attended the reopening ceremony, is urging the young people to display a sense of loyalty, commitment, pride, and patriotism to Tobago. The reopening of these Y zones provides us with an opportunity to encourage our children, our brothers, our sisters, our nieces, and our nephews to begin to equip themselves with the skills that are necessary for them to become masters of their own destiny. Officials are planning to reopen all of the island's Y zones. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. There are two gazebos at the fort. The one behind me gives a panoramic view of Black Rock, Plymouth, and neighboring villages. It also provides a shade for locals and visitors enjoying this scenic view. In the past few years, extra emphasis has been placed on enhancing health care in Tobago. Continuous retraining is one area that's beginning to bear fruit, as we hear in this next report from Crystal George. 
It's important to ensure all emergency care providers can respond effectively to critical situations. That's why the team on the maternity ward at the Scarborough General Hospital provides continuous training for its midwives, nurses, and physicians. It's allowing medical staff to enhance their skills and develop teamwork so they can safely manage any complication patients may experience. Today was just a continuation of the efforts of the Tobago Regional Health Authority and the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology's efforts to train staff, do continued training. Uh, these skills and drills are important to prepare the staff in the event of a problem occurring, specifically with women bleeding in labor. We know that in the past uh, we've had challenges in this area and we've had some deaths. All of this is an aim to uh, prevent and avoid this problem from causing a maternal death. Postpartum hemorrhage usually happens within 24 hours of delivery. Identification and treatment of this condition can prevent the loss of a young mother. According to Dr. Leslie Bishop, staff must be alert and fully equipped for when such situations occur. One of the major causes of maternal death around the world and in Trinidad and Tobago is bleeding after delivery, which in technically is called postpartum hemorrhage, massive postpartum hemorrhage. In an effort to reduce our incidence of maternal death and maternal mortality, we are doing emergency drills. One of the drills we are practicing this morning is on how we would respond to a patient who has a postpartum hemorrhage, who is bleeding heavily after delivery. Being better prepared will ensure fewer families are affected by postnatal complications. Because we have had cases where postpartum hemorrhage was managed effectively on the ward. <laughs> This procedure is very important since postpartum hemorrhage is the leading cause of maternal mortality worldwide. Initiatives like these will help improve the quality of health care to all Tobago residents. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. With a beautiful array of palm trees, plants and small flower gardens, this fort provides a wonderful location for outdoor events. It's often used as a spot for wedding and birthday photo shoots. Sport development is not just about finding young talent. It's also about ensuring coaches have the skills needed to nurture the next generation of star athletes. More in this report. Sport development is one of the key areas in focus for Tobago in 2018. And on the heels of the multi-skills training workshop, netball is the next sport to benefit from coach training. The recent netball coaching workshop held on the island is the perfect platform to boost the development of young players. The introductory session provided coaches and sport development officers with the basic techniques needed to produce young netballers who can go on to represent Trinidad and Tobago at various levels. It has been an excellent weekend where we have been able to partner with coaches and empower them through teaching them the sport of netball and how to conduct coaching in a strategic manner. We, are, we trust that through this experience, coaches would be able to strategize the way forward, even in community groups as they teach their charges in schools and various areas, and that they will be better positioned to deliver in the sport of netball. The one-day workshop covered elementary skills. It's part of a bigger program to accelerate the advancement of netballers across the country. It's the basic fundamentals, so some of the catching, passing, shooting, agilities. So it's basically the basics, the fundamentals of the game, which will be taught in the program and which are being taught to the coaches now. After discussions with the um, national governing body, there's a proposal on the table to have a level one um, international course done with the coaches. The workshop will prepare coaches for an upcoming 12-month program, which will focus on developing young players in the sport. Well, one of the outcomes that we hope is to help um, boost uh, participation in netball, because after doing um, some research, we, we have noticed that the participation in netball, especially at the youth level in the communities, have decreased. So with this program, we hope that this would revitalize netball in all the communities and in Tobago. The netball coaching workshop was hosted at the Shaw Park Hardcourt facility through collaboration between the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs 
and the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but coming up next, the focus was on the island's young boys at a recent symposium. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Reviews from TripAdvisor list Fort Bennett as one of the places you must visit while you're in Tobago. It's been described by visitors as a special spot, peaceful and of course with great views. The NGO Women of Substance is taking a unique approach to domestic violence awareness. They are seeking to make an impact on the island's boys by inspiring them through a recent symposium. Marlon Gottsleben explains. Domestic violence, delinquency, struggles with education, these are some of the many social issues facing our boys and men. One group is trying to inspire positive change among Tobago's boys, Women of Substance. A non-profit organization recently hosted its second boys' symposium. The symposium was aimed at empowering young students of the Signal Hill Secondary School. Women of Substance is an organization that deals with victims of domestic violence and abuse. So from our, we have our domestic violence support group. From our sit and chats, support group meetings, what we recognize is that a lot of the women will talk about how angry the men are and being a survivor myself, I understand quite well how angry my abuser was. So what we want to do is change the mindset of the young men so that in the long run we would have less abusers. The symposium focused on first for males for the project, which is still in its first phase. Speakers included Sergeant Glenroy Brassi of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, Pastor Dapo Oyinyoli, and Attorney at Law Dr. Wendell Wallace, who is also a criminology lecturer. Dr. Wallace spoke about the possible triggers of violence in males. Some of you are facing challenges, maybe you come from broken homes, where the father is absent, where you might be seeing violence at home, right? These are some of the challenges. Gangs, sexuality, you have issues with sexuality, masculinity. You want to prove that you are a man, that you are a young man. But the way to prove that is not necessarily by being involved in a gang. The theme for this event was Strengthening Our Boys, Strong Boys Equal Stronger Men. And according to the presenters at the symposium, attitude, self-confidence and self-love are some of the key requirements for success. Police Constable Rundell James, a Signal Pass student, reminded the young men that their education is also critical in their future. Adults take it for granted that at your age, you are not exposed to certain things or you're not cognizant of certain things, but that is not the truth. Everybody here is aware of what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do. I attended the school at your age, and when I was coming here, what I concerned myself with was getting good grades. What I concerned myself with is that at the end of the year, when I leave here, at the end of my five years, that I have something, not just to show my parents, but to show for myself. The first boys' symposium was held in 2017 at Roxborough Secondary School. The organization intends to host this event throughout the island's primary and secondary school. I am Marlon Gutzleben for Let's Talk Tobago. Success is usually determined by how we respond to challenges in our lives. In this next story, we tell you about an author who is drawing on her experiences to motivate others to become better versions of themselves. Have a look at this story. It's a book for those seeking the secrets to success. Author Dr. Nicola Harvey Mitchell draws on her experiences and countless hours of research. Summarized through 21 words that can empower you to live a more meaningful life, its title is 21 Powerful Peace to Success. So I've always been fascinated by success, and therefore this book is actually a culmination of my observations, my studies, my research and success. However, I think it started all back sometime 
in 2016 after several speaking engagements, I think with St. Francois Girls College, and with my mommy, as she was going through her last days with me, she died in our arms on the 5th of November, 2016, a beautiful experience, and that was my true success. Dr. Harvey Mitchell says she enjoyed the challenge of writing the book. One reader has found the book to be an excellent tool for life. As a veteran mom, and I have two adult daughters now, no more expected, of course. <laughs> I wish I had this when I was raising them. I didn't do too badly, eh? but this book would definitely have made it easier. Also reviewing the 21 powerful piece to success was Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles. He says the book highlights the popular saying that life is a journey, not a destination. The language is simple, yet not simplistic. The tone is inviting and understanding. The mood evokes an I can do this too feeling on the inside of the reader. Dr. Harvey Mitchell has plans to continue writing about success in the future. Oh, ha, hi. Reading make it a full man. And when I say man, I mean both man and woman. So don't hesitate. Make it a priority. And make sure that everybody buy a copy. Drag your poor Mr. Fiddler. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk to Baby. It's now time for Have Your Say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. So here's a look at this week's question and, of course, your responses. All right, so we're here with Miss Jordan right now. So we're here with Bruce right now. So we're here with Brent right now. Are we asking Miss Are we asking Miss Winchester? I can't talk for it. I'm telling you so we are through the streets of Scarborough right now and speaking about saving energy, we caught up with a guy, he is setting up his coal pots right now, Mr. Wayne John, right? And we asked him, Mr. John, what do you do to save energy? Well, as you see, we be using coal, which is natural. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no gas or anything, it's just coal, firewood, you know, about to light the fire. I am most of my clothes. At one time, I iron everything one time, so I wouldn't have to iron every day. Try and keep the lights and them off when it's not necessary. And if possibly, and we could use the solar system, I will go that route. Turn off my lights, put my fridge on economy mode. Um, do I have the TV running too long, iron once a week, stuff like that. Cut on my light. Like um, consumption in terms of changing my bulbs and so on. Yeah, the fluorescent bulb. Like if you want to wash, you use your hands sometimes. Don't use the don't use the current. When you go when you home, you don't have you don't put on no you don't put on lights in every room. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Change all the bulbs in my house to energy saving bulbs. Try to take off the um the lights when I'm not using it, all that stuff. I just make sure and tell my children to unplug stuff that they're not using, you know, and we have little solar things at home. So we just take off the current and use, try to use the solar stuff. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program. And be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Tobago House of Assembly's Pan Championships 2017. We do hope you enjoy.